Hey everyone, it's Brandon from Altruist Dog Training where we put your dog first. And how do we do that? By empowering you as the owner. Uh, my apologies in advance for the wind, can't control it. But today I wanna uh, answer a question from a subscriber. It's a great question. Y'all keep coming with the great questions. I love it, I love it. Um, but essentially asking about um, stages of development in dog training. And this individual says that they have a Springer hunting dog there, pure hunting dog, um, that's being pretty defiant, okay? Uh, and it's giving some trouble. I'm gonna put the comment up there so y'all can read it. Um, but yeah, so there's not a lot of talk about stages of development insofar as how it relates to dog training and probably for good reason, right? Because uh, it, it's not that important. All right, and, and let me let me explain that first before you head to the comments. All right, what I mean is that you should keep it as a you know keep it in the back of your mind as you know sort of a, a reference point, you know something to reference. But I, I don't want you to obsess on on the stages of, of dog development because in other words, the dog is gonna get to where you want them to be or where they need to be. It's gonna happen with time and with patience. Okay, and, and, and by building on success and things like that. Okay, I've worked with wiener dogs, I've worked with Cane Corsos, I've worked with German Shepherds, okay, I've worked with all sorts of breeds, okay, and, and they all pretty much can do the same stuff. The only differences that you might run into are differences of, of size. In other, in other words, I can teach a West Highland the same thing that I can teach my AM staff over there. Okay? They they all do the same stuff. So I'm not gonna really go through the chart. I, I just Googled this, all right? Um, Y'all can read it. But I, I'm only gonna talk about two things in this chart, all right? Um, and, and the first thing that I wanna, wanna talk about is like the teething thing, all right? I know that all puppies are gonna teeth, all right? They're gonna get those milk teeth, they're really sharp. But I, I don't have in my head that, oh, my dog is this age, so they're just, they're, they're gonna just by default be teething and there's nothing I can do about it. No, puppies, they don't bite me. They quickly learn that my hand is not something to bite or, or that my ankle is not something to bite, irrespective of the age, all right? And I've had larger dogs try to do the same thing, okay? Um, I, I worked with, uh, Sam, I'm gonna be posting a playlist for her, um, kind of dedicated to Sam, the German Shepherd. And um, it was quite sad, but it's, it's a typical story. Um, Sam spent all day in the kennel because she's a young German Shepherd puppy. Mind you, this is the first dog that the family owned, a super high drive herding dog. Shouldn't be your first dog, all right? That, you know, that they take a little bit more experience. and. They just have so much energy and they're massive and they're powerful, okay? So it's not the same if a if a Yorkie jumps on you and nips you, eh, people think it's cute. But if a German Shepherd does that, it's not the same, okay? So she was nipping everyone, they had kids, she spent all day in the kennel, all right? She's in that te she was in that teething um, stage when she came to me. I had her, she wasn't nipping in our first session. I stopped that in 10 minutes and everyone was in disbelief. Now I knew though that she's gonna make mistakes. In other words, this is not a, it's not a total thing, not a total solution yet. It's not permanent yet. I know she's gonna make mistakes, but I'm gonna be on her. I don't, I'm not focusing on the stage of development that she's in. Another thing with the stages of development is it kinda, it matters insofar as the, the capability or the intellectual capability of the dog. So I, I know that a real small puppy, they don't have the intellect yet and to be able to comprehend or perform certain tasks. But I, I don't obsess, I don't fixate on that because I know that I'm gonna you know work on them little by little. Give me one second. Just keeping an eye on my dog over there. I, I know that they're gonna get to where I need them to be, and I, I'm gonna I'm here to guide them along the way. Um, so 
Does that make sense? Um, with that out the way, the next thing that I want to touch on is that fear period. I believe it's eight to 12 weeks there, okay? But the dog may become fearful before that. They may become fearful of the vacuum at four weeks or at five weeks. So, so don't obsess on that. Don't, don't fixate on that, okay? Um, Sophie, come. To that fear period thing. They may become fearful before the allotted period or that, that the time that it's supposed to be a period. Okay, that, that, that they're supposed to be fearful. You have to continue to work with the dog. I've had older dogs. I had a fully grown two-year-old around that age, black lab that was afraid to walk up and down stairs. So when did that happen? Did it happen in the exact fear period? Actually, no. So don't, don't fixate on that. Just know that, wait for the wind to pass. Just know that you have to continue to work with the dog and, and don't be worried. The, the dog is gonna get to where they need to get. Um, with your, granted that's with your guidance, okay? Um, dogs can become phobic of all sorts of things at any age, at any stage. Where the stages of development really comes into play is if you don't do training, okay? Because if you're not training, then like, okay, if you've watched my previous videos, you know that I've said, I say, how do dogs function? In other words, how do they act? No different than with humans. They are gonna function via instinct or by training, train command. Same thing, humans function by instinct or by civility, chivalry, um, manners, okay, couth. Um, so if you, you can imagine if you had a small child and you didn't, you didn't socialize them, you didn't train them. In other words, you don't teach them how to be a productive member of society. They're gonna be, they're gonna just function by instinct. So if you're not doing the training, they only have the instinct to work off of, and then their life is much more likely to kind of follow that chart there. Okay, so um, that's the bottom line. Continue to work with your dog and guide them. You know, you can keep the stages of development in the back of your mind, but don't fixate on it. And don't think that because my dog is, um, because my dog is, insert the year or the months or whatever, or the weeks, right? Because my dog is six months, now they're just gonna be defiant and I just have to put up with it. No, um, you might know that, okay, it's about six months, so my dog may become, if I don't stay on them, definitely they're gonna be really defiant, but that's where the training comes in, okay? I will know, for example, if I'm working with a six, seven month old dog, I, I kind of have that in the back of my mind, but I know that if they give me a refusal, which is maybe more likely to happen around that period, I'm gonna meet that with a no. One second. Sophie, come. Yes. Just vibrated to me, any educator. That's the beautiful thing about these, these things, by the way. Okay. I saw a dog, I'm gonna go on a rant for a second, but I, I saw a dog, uh, or a video I should say, of a dog that got hit by a bike, like a motorcycle, moped, something like that, and they captioned it, this is why your dog should be on a leash. I totally agree, your dog should be on a leash, especially because why most dogs are, are not trained. So it's, a, it's, it's the liability of them being off leash is one. Then the liability of them being off leash with no training is it's way up here. You you put them on a on a mini educator. Now I don't 
I know this dog really well. I do this for a living. I know her inside and out, okay? And I know this, I know where we're at, okay? I know the area. Um, and this is not a busy intersection street behind me, okay? You, you, you gotta keep these things in mind. But the beautiful thing about, cause you want the dog to have off leash freedom, but to do it safely, okay? So I have her on a mini educator, low settings, okay? And just now I vibrated it to me because she's caught up in a scent, all right? And so, and there's a lot of wind, all right? Hopefully you can hear me okay. So instead of me having to scream, especially if she's real far, if we're in a huge field, we're doing field work, I can tap the vibrate, she'll feel me. And she, know what that, she knows what that sensation means from, it could be a mile away. For example, all right, um, so it's more efficient. And the, the dog's brain, <laughs> let me check if we're still rolling. We're still rolling, baby. Oh, this is a long video, I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, the, the dog's brain is about the size of a, of a lemon, okay, at the biggest. And much of that brain capacity I think it's like 70%, 80%. It's a huge number like that. It's uh, occupied by scent, okay? Um, they have a limited color spectrum, right? They can't see all colors, right? They can't, for example, they can't see the color red, all right? But what they, what they, for what they lack in eyesight, they make up for in scent. And so most of their brain is controlled by scent. So sometimes what happens is when they're caught up in a scent, it's not that they're saying F you, I'm not gonna listen to you. It's that they're sort of like in a state almost, like a catatonic state where they're just like, it's just scent. So they don't hear you, okay? Which is why with the, with the vibrate or stem on a low setting or whatever appropriate setting it is for the environment, they'll feel you and they feel the sensation. Just, just a little side note there. I, I hope that kind of clears things up. Don't let stages of development bother you. Um, don't fixate it on, on it. Keep it in the back of your mind. Just know that you have to stick with the training and stick with them, you know? If the dog gives you a refusal, they don't want to do something, you meet that refusal with a no or with a ah, ah, okay? Whatever word you like. And then you reinstate that command. You, 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 they will learn what flies, what doesn't fly in the home okay so with that i'll see you in the next video thanks for the question